Welcome back to Forby. Today we're looking at the TD5 Discovery. It seems to have a problem with the starter motor. And what is happening is we put the key in the ignition and we give it a twist and all we get is a click. Now if you listen very, very carefully. All we're getting is a click. Now what we know is that these starter motors are very, very susceptible to the solenoid contacts wearing out. And what I'm going to show you today is how to change those solenoid contacts. What we're doing now is we're just going to disconnect the electrical supply to the starter motor. This is the one from your ignition that triggers the solenoid, and this is the main feed in from the battery. So we'll just take these off before we demount the starter. And we want that little nut, so we're going to just put that back on there. So the two bottom bolts here are 13 mil. have these out. There's one. It's only held on with three bolts. In fact the top one is not a bolt, it's a, it's a stud with a nut on the end and I believe it's a different size so we'll have a look see what size that is. I think it might be a 15. There's two of them and the last one is right round over on the top. I have to do that one by feel. And my hunch says it's a 15, so let, let me go and get a 15 mil socket. So we got the starter motor off, and it wasn't a 15 mil; it was a 17 mil. And what I use is a little four-inch extension. It's very awkward to get to. Um, you'll be working by feel, but it's totally possible to do from the underside of the vehicle. So the next thing I'm going to do is just push, put this through the wash tank, and make it a bit cleaner and nicer to handle in the workshop. So we're going to take this cap off the back of the solenoid assembly and we've got three little 8mm bolts on this particular starter that's going to give us access. And we're going to keep those to one side, pop that end off and we're going to find a rubber seal. Gently fries off this rubber seal and we want to keep that because we're going to reuse that. So put those to one side and in here we've got our plunger and this is what gets activated by the solenoid. When the coil in the solenoid is energized, that is when you twist the key in the ignition the electromagnetic force in here is going to pull down on that plunger which in turn is going to fire out it's going to fire out the little gear that connects into the ring gear on the back of the flywheel and we're going to pull that out and the spring and if we can see here this copper ring the amount of arcing that's been going on here has eventually eroded it away and it's eroded the contacts 
down in there. Let me find a pointer. Now you may or may not be able to see that, but these contacts are worn right out. And it's these that we're gonna change. So this piece here, we're gonna lose that. We don't need that. And we're gonna get in and we're gonna change these contacts and we're gonna change the plunger. So that's the nut that we saved from before. We're gonna keep hold of that and we're gonna to gather together the spanners we need to change these contacts out. If we look, I don't know if you can quite make that out, but you can see possibly where I'm scratching. There's a massive step in the copper. And uh, in fact, it's a lot worse on this side than it is on that side. We'll whip this off as well. This is the main electricity, the live feed, to the motor commutator and this is what gets activated by the solenoid so as the solenoid engages it engages the gear into the ring gear on the back of the engine and simultaneously fires the motor via this cable fires the motor up to start so let's get into this so I've got a 14 mil spanner in my hand I'm just going to crack that not off there so we've got a nut followed by an isolator followed by a little o-ring A large seal and that contact pops out there's another plastic isolator in there and here's the copper contact now you'll see there's a step in there and this is where the copper has simply worn out over time this plunger just by very nature of how it works after each engagement it tends to just flip around um, which is why it's circular and it's why you've got arcing around the entire ring of copper so as you can see that's what makes the contact so this is scrap we're going to th throw that away this is scrap we're going to throw that away and we've got some new ones to go in its place. So let's whip off this side as well. So over on this side, we're gonna remove the main input to the starter motor commutator, which is a 12 volt, 12 millimeter, I beg your pardon. There we go. And again, the 14 undo that and once again we've got an isolator a little washer another o-ring a bolt and there is the contact now this one isn't as bad but it's still been arcing I can see on the surface it's been arcing so we're gonna get rid of that and the insulator okay So in our pack, this is the pack. The rebuild pack. These are available on our website. And we've got a new plunger with a new copper ring. And we've got some new copper contacts.
and various nuts and bolts and washers. So we're going to put in our new isolator on this one side. We're going to put in our new contact. New copper bolt. And then we're going to put the O-ring back on. We're going to put the isolation ring back on. And we're going to put the nut back on. Make sure that's snug down nice. Doesn't need to be crazy tight. I don't want to be breaking this plastic isolator. And we can put the main feed back on to the commutator on the starter motor motor unit. So there we go. That's the contact on the one side done. And we'll slip this rubber boot back over the top. Now this side, I don't know if you can see that. Let me show you close up. This side has got a knurl in the copper. And the idea of that is as it pushes into the copper contact, it cuts its way into this copper contact and that just gives a much better electricity path. So we need to set this and cut it in and the way we're going to do that is put that through there. This one is sat down flush with the top of the uh, electromagnet and we're going to do the same with this. So we're going to draw that bolt through and just crush that. I'm going to put in the new plunger and I'm going to press down on it and what we need to do is draw this bolt through and this little serrations, the knurl on the inside of the head needs to be pulled through to grip that copper. So if we put that back on there and the washer make a bit of a stack up. We should be able to pull that through and just cut that contact into the thread of the bolt. So I've got a couple of washers there to make up the, the stack. And we've got this nut here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw that through. And I'm going to do this at the same time as pushing down on there so we've got a good contact on both sides that sets those two bottom contacts in the right position and then I'm just gonna tighten that up and you can see that copper bolt being drawn into that contact and there we have it that's getting drawn in nicely pop that back off because I forgot to put the seal on. So let me put the seal in. So the o-ring's in place. This seal we're going to put around the outside of there.
twist that returning knot back on. And that's got a little locking tab at the bottom of the plastic there, just to lock it in, uh, just to locate it in the housing. And we're going to tighten that up. Once again, I'm not going to over tighten it, just enough. And make sure that's flat on the inside. Hold on. In fact, I'm going to tighten it up. with the plunger in place. There we go. Just snug. And that's it. That's our nut that came off. That can go back on there. So now we're gonna put the cap back on. We've got the seal inside the cap. We want to retain that. That goes back over there. And we've got three bolts to bolt it back up. Now, I've done many, many, many miles in my cars over the years. Off-roading, out in the back and beyond and nowhere. Mostly with other people, but sometimes on my own. And my biggest fear when I'm on my own is my starter motor failing, especially when I'm in miles from nowhere. And for the price of one of these kits, you know what, it might even be worth throwing one in the bottom of your toolbox. If you're going on some sort of expedition, overlanding, you know, you've got a, a few miles on the starter motor, you're not sure what the condition is, you know what, change out these contacts either before you go or slam one of the kits in the bottom of your toolbox and should your starter motor fail when you're out and about you can rebuild it simple and easily these kits are available on our website go to forby.co.uk and you'll find these rebuild kits I'll put a link in the description below well all that remains to do is to put this back on the car and make sure it works so thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.